Hello and welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are going to be continuing the module short story narrations for the various operators in Ark Knights. Today with the one for operator Gladia. And uh, considering when this video is going to be going live, it's going to be on the same day as the beginning of the Stultifera Navis rerun. So for those of you who might have not had the opportunity to beat the event last year when it was live or were not around, enjoy. It is a very good story. A lot of details, a lot of history details on top of it. And if you, by any chance, do not have the time to read through all of that, or uh, by some chance last year just uh, hopped and skipped through everything very quickly and are now confused as to where the hell am I going to read all of the extra details if not on a wiki page, uh, fear not, in the description of the video is a playlist for the entire event, uh, from start to finish, everything in order, every single node, every single detail, every single uh, diary entry and so on and so forth, what, what was in the, in the menus, that for some reason is not available in, in, in the intermezzi section of the in-game menu, which still moves me a tiny bit, but uh, what can you do? But yeah, everything done in order, full playlist, fully narrated, fully voice acted, uh, lots of details. So uh, yeah, enjoy this uh, gigantic story. Uh, and uh, we just came from the back of uh, another gigantic story, which was Lone Trail, so uh, oof, lots of reading. Anyway, enjoy that. But for now, let us proceed into Gladia's a short story on her module and see what that one is about. The short story and the module are titled Console's Hand Mirror and this is how it goes. Upon hearing her mother leave the house, young Gladia gets up from her bed, calls her lamp alight and pulls out her vanity hand mirror from under her pillow. Not that she would with any regularity be fully awake when the clock rolls over to zero, but tonight she needs to look at herself. She needs to choose. As other Aegir view her, she is Gladia, daughter of key Academy of Sciences personnel, winner of all youth competitions, a family girl, a young success story. But in her mirror, Gladia sees a carbon-based robot, an emotionless form. Her memory begins with her birth mother being infatuated with Aegir affairs and Academy policymaking. Her home merely a secondary point of residence, after the Academy's lounge. She once believed her birth mother sought accomplishment from her, and so she compelled herself to relentlessly reach new heights, applying the standards of adults to her young self, but she never was able to pry any form of feedback from her birth mother. No acknowledgement, no criticism, nothing whatsoever. No, her birth mother gave all her time to Aegir and left not one idle second of one spare minute for her daughter. Perhaps it was all an accident that she was raised, and this household had no reason to exist. This was the sort of conclusion Gladia reached. So, what else but to look for somewhere she can truly call home? Eager, she can truly call family. She has decided she will seek. She is set to do it. She wants to hear for herself just what kind of case her birth mother might make in a civil court of law. Gladia stows away the hand mirror, turns off her light and sinks into rest. Her mind swims frantically with planning. She's restless all night. Gladia stands before the tremendous standing mirror of the council's residence, examining her negligible self in the looking glass. In just a few hours, she will depart the mansion, take to an operating table and begin the Abyssal Hunter modification surgery. Perhaps the moment the procedure is over, her dutiful vocation will be as a military commander and not a technology council, and she will take to the battlefield, there become a monster with hands drenched in fra fresh blood. This has completely destroyed any notion of plotting her life's trajectory, and may even end her time then and there. Gladia has never feared death, nor the giving of her life, but the sumptuous hall she sees in the mirror does make clear to her an aside. She is still teeming with regrets. Some are desires, some are responsibilities, some are promises, and becoming an abyssal hunter will render them all forever unfulfilled. If only the surgery could be postponed long enough, if only Aegir could publish the full scope of the plans to her as soon as possible. This is the first time she realizes that she had never had it all firmly in her grasp like she thought. 
She will lose. She will lose and she will never be able to regain. Gladia looks around the hall one more time, then returns to her study. In a few hours, she will depart for the Abyssal Hunter experimentation site. Before she does, she has the mansion's smart housekeeping system store two documents. One, her speech to be given upon becoming an Abyssal Hunter. One, a will. After Gladia is marooned in a land not of Aegir, she has, in the truest sense of the words, lost it all. All she has left with her are a blood-ridden lance, a still passable outfit, and a desiccated and scorching eternity. And now she stands before a pothole filled with fresh water, gazing upon her own reflection, washing the filth and bloodstains from her clothes. The silt comes off with the water easily enough, but the cl clots of blood on her garments refuse to be washed off. With no option but to brush them, brush them by hand, she watches as their hardened forms attain a pellucidity, turn the shade of liquid blood and run through the seams, dripping to a rest upon the soil. Is it her blood? The Seaborn's blood? Or her fellow's blood? She cannot differentiate. All of a sudden, Gladia notices something, and she leans close to the hole, carefully examining her neck. A tiny scale. The why is a mystery. Gladia's birth mother comes to her mind in that moment. If she could, she would rather suffer her neglect again. The scale would never have found the chance to rest upon her neck. But it has. Gladia stands up and throws her fresh water-soaked hair behind her in one gesture. She can indeed feel it. This is an embitterment, a discontent inside her. There is no need for these feelings to surface, and they do nothing to help in this present situation. She has indeed lost it all, but she finds she can still afford to uphold her basic honor and dignity, which in turn means she can still move onwards with her head held high. She needs no hope. She simply focuses on possibilities, feasibilities and results. She can still return to Aegir. She is still alive to recover the Abyssal Hunters, scattered and lost. As long as the probability is not zero, she is still bound to try. So make good on it, she shall. Gladia wipes her lance's bloodstains dry and vanishes from the side of the hole. Seconds later, the sonic boom jolts the water from the pool, blanketing any and all traces she was ever there. And that is our short story, pretty much a look upon Gladia's life uh, from her childhood days essentially to uh, the current situation which seems to be, uh, as this descriptor here says, uh, one tiny scale is visible on her neck just before the events of Undertides. Uh, as a slight little spoiler, if you haven't had the opportunity yet to read through Undertides, in Undertides we do get to see uh, a unique CG where you can see Gladia's neck and multiple scales already growing on it. But outside of that, if you want to see that entire story and what it has to do, or rather why she is growing scales on her body, uh, and what is the Abyssal Hunter procedure that she goes to, all I can say is just go through the both Undertides and Stultifera stories, links to both provided in the uh, description of the video. But yeah, interesting look back. Uh, her mother was nothing. <laughs> I think nothing is the perfect, perfect way to describe her mother. What a mother, even. Uh, but yeah, uh, once again, another story that also depicts a bit of the technological uh, level of the Egerians and how crazy they are. Uh, but uh, yeah, interesting little uh, look back and uh, very. Very interesting look as to why she decided to become an Aegir, essentially. Or rather, an Abyssal Hunter, sorry, not an Aegir. But, um, very nice. Very nice peek back. And, uh, this story seems to be then leading into what we will then see in other tides. But anyway, let us now take a look at what the module upgrades for uh, Gladia. As always, let's take a look at the uh, current traits and talents before we take a look at what the module changes. So, traits. 
can shift enemies by using skills, can be deployed on range tiles. Talents, Waves of Eager. When deployed, all Abyssal Hunter operators recover 2.5% max HP every second and receive 25% less physical and arts damage from sea monster enemies. The second talent is Survival of the Fittest. When attacking enemies with 3 or less weight, increases attack to 136%. The 6% here in the bracket is from the potential upgrades. So then, what do we get from the module? Uh, first and foremost, module is on tier 1. Uh, so the stats up here will be reflected from that. Uh, plus, uh, you will see what the module upgrades in a more natural form in a second. But what do we get? Well, base stats go up for max HP and attack. And we get another trait, which is now... While being pulled, enemies take arts damage proportional to the distance traveled. Now, I was curious of, to how much damage that is, and according to the wiki page, it's 800 arts damage per tile that they go through. And uh, considering that Gladia is someone who has reach of 3 tiles, you can do the math. <laughs> 800 per tile, if the wiki page is accurate, that is a lot of arts damage at once. But anyway... What does the module upgrade for her talents? Now, I would have loved to already upgrade this to tier 2, because this is a very dope module, especially if you're running Abyssal Hunter units, and you'll see in a second why, but I'm out of resources, <laughs> so that will wait. But, it upgrades her first talent, Waves of Eager. As a reminder, on normal, the Waves of Eager talent uh, makes it so that every Abyssal Hunter unit, including herself, is recovering 2.5% uh, of their max HP every second, and they are uh, they have damage reduction for physical and arts damage of 25% if hit by sea monsters. So if you're hitting, or, or rather, are uh, your abyssal hunter units, pardon, are being hit by seaborn, the damage will be reduced by 25%. Tier two, oh boy, tier two, uh, the HP regeneration is now 3% of max HP on the unit. Uh, on the Abyssal Hunter unit, and the uh, physical and arts evasion, uh, sorry, physical and arts reduction is 28%. On tier 3, this will go up to 30%, and the healing will be 3.5%. But one big change happens here on tier 2, and that is the fact that this physical and arts damage reduction is now present for everybody. Any enemy that is hitting the Abyssal Hunter units depending if you're on tier 2 or tier 3, will be reduced, will have their damage done to them reduced by 28 or 30%, depending on the tier of uh, the module. That is insane. Uh, and uh, if you're someone who enjoys running the, uh, the uh, Abyssal Hunter units uh, for most content or just in general, uh, get this module. If you haven't already, uh, save up modules, save up the tokens, save up everything, and just get the module. This is insane. This is pretty much damage mitigation. Uh, however, quick reminder, this is only for physical and arts damage. True damage, if the enemy is doing true damage, it will still uh, do its actual value. But any physical and arts damage done on stage 2 and onwards, well, no, doesn't matter what enemy is hitting them, uh, they will have their uh, damage <laughs> reduced by a very significant amount. This makes the Abyssal Hunter units very su survivable in any kind of scenario. But yeah, anyway, that would be it. Like I said, uh, considering the Stultifera Navi story is uh, going to be running as of this video going live, uh, or, la or later after this video goes live, uh, enjoy it. Playlist for the entire thing, both narrated and voice acted, is in the description of the video plus the Undertide story and a bunch of other things. I did already videos on the other Abyssal Hunter uh, units modules. Uh, links to those you can also find in the description of the video. So enjoy all of that if you want to hear all of those little stories. And uh, yeah, what else can I say? Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. Uh, if you're new to the channel, there is a lot more as you just heard on the channel than just this. Uh, so consider subscribing. Uh, I cover stories as they go live, uh, with narr narrations and voice acting on them, and uh, yeah, enjoy. Thank you very much, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.